Jenna. I'm the park naturalist here at Bear Branch Nature Center and Hashua Environmental Center. And we are here in front of our aviary today to give you a little spiel about some of our awesome birds that we have here. Now we have all of these birds under multiple different permits through DNR and US Fish and Wildlife and the USDA. Uh, and they are all living with us because they cannot be returned back into the wild for multiple reasons. Uh, some of them have injuries from either flying into glass, getting hit by cars. Others are imprints, meaning that they were raised by people. And so all of these guys cannot be returned back into the wild. And instead we use them to be our amazing animal ambassadors for their species, teach people up close about how cool these birds are and what people at home can do to make sure that we don't get any more birds into our aviary here. So this is our beautiful great horned owl. She has been with us for a while and the original uh, person that was rehabbing her thought that she was ready to be re-released back into the wild. And so he put her outside and she flew up onto a, a post and he was like, okay, I, I need to make sure that you can actually like fly away. So eventually uh, she took off from the post. She flapped a couple of times and then it was almost like she short circuited and just fell. And so he went, okay, obviously you're not ready. Um, and that's why she leans too. So she has some sort of central nervous system thing going on when she was hit by a car. And so her balance is not right. And then she also has a little bit of a wing problem as well. Uh, so that's why she was deemed non-releasable and why we have her. Uh, she weighs about four-ish pounds, three and a half, four pounds. Um, so again, for such a large bird, you have to think for those that have chickens in their backyard, like your chickens weigh a lot more than she does. Uh, even the bald eagle, the bald eagle only weighs about 10 and a half pounds. So your Thanksgiving turkey weighs more than the eagle does. These guys are called the tiger of the sky. Uh, because of their nice kind of stripage that they have. And then also these guys are voracious predators. They are super, super strong. Uh, again, that grip strength is over 360 pounds per square inch. So once they grab something, if they don't want to let go of it, they're not letting go of it. Oftentimes these guys are hitting their prey with such impact that the impact itself is what kills the prey, um, let alone, you know, them being stabbed by all these nice sharp talons down there. So these guys are eating, you know, your mice and rats, things like that, but they can eat much larger things. Uh, they'll take possums, small foxes, skunks. Um, they actually quite enjoy skunks. And it's funny because birds don't have the same sort of olfactory system as we do. Uh, and so th the stinkiness doesn't bother them at all. Um, but yeah, they, they'll take a lot larger uh, of food sources. I will say people are often afraid of these guys if you have not only backyard chickens, but if you have uh, small dogs, cats, things like that, never leave your small dog or cat unattended outside at night. Uh, not only do you have to worry about you know, a, an owl, but there are plenty of other predators uh, in Carroll County. You know, you, we've got coyotes, foxes, all sorts of stuff. Um, so it's best to make sure that you're always supervising your pets. Uh, these guys have uh, one of the earlier nesting uh, seasons. So these guys are starting in mid to end of January into February when they're starting to make their nests, starting to lay, all of that good stuff. When you usually think about birds' nests, you're like, oh, that's a spring thing uh, for your songbirds and more of you know your, your hawks, things like that, definitely. But these guys are one of the first ones. So these guys are actually funny. They will, they sometimes will build their own, but most likely they just take over old corvid nests. So crows, ravens, whatever, their nests, they're just like, I'm gonna take that now. And since they're the first ones to start nesting, if they take over that nest, even when the crows come back, they're like, well, I guess we're not coming back to that one anymore. Uh, they'll spruce it up a little bit and then they'll have their, their babies in, in that nest. Um, most raptors, if they're successful in whatever nest that they're in that season, they will come back to that same nest each season and continue to use it. These guys have absolutely gorgeous eyes. Again, their, their vision is also excellent be able to see everything and owls have sort of like night vision um, so in their retina in our retina you have rods and you have cones cones let you see color and rods let you see light and dark owls have more rods than cones so that way at nighttime they can take the little bit of light from the moon the stars and they can see things just as bright as we can see it now none of these birds 
would enjoy it. The most that we handle them besides them sitting on our glove is um, we do health checks on them. So every couple of months we get them out. We have to trim their beaks. We trim their talons. In the wild, they're eating a lot more like bony stuff and it's kind of helping to wear it down. They also will rub it on natural materials to help sand it down. Also, they're not eating as much out in the wild because they're every hunt is not a successful hunt and so their beak and their talons aren't growing as fast here they get fed just about every day every once in a while we'll do a fast day um, to mimic the wild um, but they're getting tons of nutrients and so they're like yes all my stuff is just going to grow so they then have to keep up with uh, the beak and the talons <laughs>